Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be about how I made this blood fox, uh, blood wolf, I should say. Uh, so it's not often that I do fantasy stuff much anymore, but I do like the one-off things when I have an idea of something, because um, I've been mainly doing realistic animals, but I'll still do the one-off fantasy type things. So this little one, it, well, I should say big one, is available in my shop at creaturesnet.com. You can find him in there. Payment plans are welcome. Just shoot me a message beforehand and um, we can talk about a plan. Um, but you can find him in my store, creaturesnet.com. Uh, so he's got a, he's pretty big. He's got a huge tail. And I've used a pretty big uh, ball and socket armature for this guy. So he, he is quite steady. Um, so he poses really, really well. And you can have him in, in so many different positions and looks um so he's got teal teal eyes don't know if you can see that yep so you got teal eyes so i thought that would stand out nicely against the nice red stark um uh face uh so yeah so he's big boy he's available like i said and if you want to see how i made him then keep watching Alrighty, so I'm starting off with a resin cast of a sculpture that I did out of monster clay, cut, wrapped, molded in silicon and then cast in resin. So you can see I have cast some glass eyes inside of this head. I have a tutorial available in my shop if you want to know the process of how I cast these eyes inside resin um, without drilling anything or um, sculpting anything else. So what I'm going to do is clean up um, around the eyes to make sure all of that resin is um, cleaned up and out. So you can see what it looks like once everything's been cleaned how the eyes look uh, a little bit more realistic than painted eyes it's a little bit more of a process to do this type of um, casting and add this kind of detail but it's I think uh, in the end it sort of pays off that it makes it a little bit more realistic um, so check it out it's in my shop creatures and that.com if you want to learn how uh, how to cast glass eyes inside resin heads so, uh, once I've done that, I generally prime all my pieces before I start painting them. So I use a canvas primer by the brand Rivian Matisse. It's just like a paint that you paint over a, a canvas and it gives it a tooth for the paint to stick to. So it works really well for resins and polymer clays. Um, so I always prime it first before I start painting and, it, and that means that the paint can stick to something a little better than just the the um, smooth resin. So the black paint that I'm using is also a water-based acrylic paint and it's by the brand Chromacryl. Uh, it's just a cheapy brand that's made here in Australia but you can find something in your local craft store that's pretty comparable. Um, I've used a lot of different acrylic paints but I find the Chromacryl I like the consistency a little bit better and also um, the pigmentation in the paints as well I quite like. Um, and it dries really quickly and it's, and it's cheap and really easy to find so um, Check out your local craft store, see if you can find a paint that you like. I suggest a Liquitex paint would look, would work quite well as well. I've used them quite a lot and they're also pretty easy to find and cheap as well. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend golden paints um, just because um, I find them a little bit uh, too thick, I guess, and it dries a little bit different. But maybe I could do a video on acrylic paints and what my um, thoughts are about that. Anyway, so the same process for the feet, it's also something that I have sculpted and cast in resin. Uh, same deal, painting as well. I always prime it and then start painting with the Chromacryl acrylic paints. You don't need to do a fantastic job of painting if you're going to be applying fur over the top. Uh, but if you are, just take a little bit more care than what I'm doing right now. But I'm just doing this really quickly because I'm going to be applying faux fur over the top of the resin. Moving on to the faux fur, so I'm going to be cutting out all the pieces that I'm going to use for the body. So for this doll, I'm going to be using a red body. It's got like a little nice black tips on the end of it, and I'm going to be accenting, accentuating it with some black. So I'm going to be doing a black mane, and I'm also going to be doing a black tail and underbelly with um, uh, those black ears that I normally do and the whites under the eyes. So I've drawn, drawn out all my shapes that I need to do for the red uh, the red parts of the body, so I'm going to cut them out um, using a small pair of sharp scissors. I like to use small scissors because I can get in between the pile and the backing of the fur and that way I can just cut the backing and not the pile so you can see how nicely that backing separates once I've cut it. If you use big scissors or um, just go haphazardly cutting, you'll end up cutting the pile and then it kind of makes it a little bit useless. 
um, when when it when it's the final look on your doll unless you're trimming the whole thing then maybe yeah you can um, be a bit more um, crazy with your cutting but I like to use the small scissors just because um, yeah it's easier to control so moving on to the dark fur or the black fur so I'm just gonna be uh, doing the underbelly for this one so I'm just marking out where I want to cut just the underbelly you also got to uh, keep in mind your seam allowance when you're attaching a different color to another color uh, just to give it a little bit of a seam allowance so I usually do that around the leg area so I usually give about a centimeter of a seam allowance on both sides and that way um, I can get a good solid seam line and attachment <laughs> to the each fur so this is what it looks like it's a little bit longer than the red fur that I'm using uh, which is what I wanted I wanted it to be a bit more um, flowy I guess so I'm just gonna cut out these pieces uh, the same deal uh, using those small pair of sharp scissors and sort of getting in between the pile and the backing of the faux fur and then I can start uh, pinning it all together and sewing it up I usually use a sewing machine to sew all of my pieces up so basically I'm gonna pin it all together the bits that I need to do and uh, once that's done I can start sewing it I've got a new sewing machine it's a Juki uh, it's pretty heavy duty and um, it's, it's, I have to sort of work out how to use it properly because it's a little bit different than just the standard old-fashioned manual one that I had before but it works quite well um, so we'll see how the seam allowance and strength is with this um, new machine. So this is what it looks like once I've sewn it all up. You can see I've left the back end open as well as the leg areas. That's so I can flip the fur the right way around. I've also left the neck area open so I have something to attach the, the head to uh, and then sort of blend it in together and make it look like one nice piece. So what I'm gonna do now is just go around the seam line and just cut some little, um, uh, little lines in it and that means you can it, it means you can move and give the body a bit more flexibility so I have a little video on my patreon about that if you want to go into a little bit more detail as to why I do that uh, you can have it head over there and find it on my patreon right now so this is what it looks like once it's been flipped the right way around you can see it's starting to take shape it will need a little bit of trimming because it's going to be a bit too fluffy for my liking um, so when you trim things uh, the body starts to take shape and it starts to look like what you're making for the armature, I'm using a ball and socket armature, which is in my store if you want to have a look and um, see what I use. Um, I get a lot of questions in regards to these armatures. Yes, I sell them, so head to my store. I'm thinking of doing a big pre-order because I'll need to order some, some more armatures soon, so I might do a pre-order for armatures and like a whole spindle a whole roll of them and that way once I get a certain amount I can order for everyone so um, from the wholesaler so people don't have to uh, order a huge batch of them so I might do a separate video on that and uh, see how everyone feels so basically you just it's really click and play basically these armatures so it's really easy to use and they're quite strong and there's no waiting for things to dry either so once the armature is installed I can start uh, sealing everything up and attaching all of those resin pieces so I start off by attaching the fur neck to the head and this acts as like a nice solid base for uh, the adult for this doll to start and me to start stuffing things with uh, polyfill uh, so I use a tacky fabric glue for this and it's just a a pretty cheap bottle of glue <laughs> it is a fabric glue specifically but it's quite tacky and it dries really really strong against the resin and the faux fur so you can rip it off but you need a quite a lot of force to rip it off I've done it before because I needed to change some things um, but it, it adheres really well uh, I get it from a local store here called spotlight and I find it uh, really really great so once that's done and I started adding bits and pieces of the polyfill I do it slowly when I start sewing the doll up so I start off by sewing the legs together and then I can start adding the polyfill to the neck area filling it out and see where I need to start sewing some more and basically like fabric sculpt the body um, so I use a ladder stitch to sew things up and uh, once that's sewn up I can start gluing those pieces together too and again acts as a, as a solid base so I can start um, just playing around with the body and that do that uh, fabric sculpting as well. 
So once that's done and it's all sewn up, I can start adding all the little details. So that's including the furring on the face and the feet. Once that's applied, I need to start adding some more little details and refining it, all of the little features and stuff on the dolls. So this is really like the final bits and pieces of the doll that really brings it to life. It's kind of like my favorite part as well. Um, apart from the sculpting, this is my favorite part, is bringing everything to life and adding all the extra little details because you can really see where your hard work has paid off and it's starting to all come together uh, and you can see the finishing line. So I'm adding all the little details on the eyes, the nose and the mouth area like I did before, but now I'm just doing it to refine the process and make it a little bit more lifelike. You can add things like whiskers. I have a tutorial on my Patreon and in my shop if you want to know how I do whiskers as well. So you can check it out there. This doll is available in my shop so check it out creaturesnet.com payment plans are welcome just message me beforehand and we can sort something out my patrons get uh my ten dollar tiers get a 10 percent discount so always keep that in mind you can check me out on instagram facebook creatures and that uh, and my shop creaturesnet.com thanks to my patrons for the support and i'll catch you in the next one bye